Good morning, Covenant City Church. Our devotion today is taken from 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 8 to 9 and verses 16 to 18. Earlier this week, I listened to a talk by Tim Keller about resiliency and burnout um, in times of crisis, and he referenced this passage. His talk was actually done at the beginning of April, but I think if possible, it is even more vital for us to ponder this reality now in July than it was a few months ago. Because I don't know about you, but we are continuing to feel the weight of this crisis. And as we continue to feel that, it can feel more and more exhausting. We can feel so burdened by the reality that we are continuing to face week in and week out. So it is vital for us as Christians to have a renewed perspective on how to face times of trials and to be reminded of that regularly. So let's read the passage, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 8 to 9 and verses 16 to 18. We are afflicted in every way, but not crushed, perplexed, but not driven to despair, persecuted, but not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed, always carrying in the body the death of Jesus so that the life of Jesus may also be manifested in our bodies. So we do not lose heart. Though our outer self is wasting away, our inner self is being renewed day by day. For this light and momentary affliction is preparing for us an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison, as we look not to the things that are seen, but to the things that are unseen. For the things that are seen are transient, but the things that are unseen are eternal. So we see here in these verses that Paul um, is talking about a way that he and those around him were resilient when they were faced with difficult situations. And they were resilient without falling into stoicism, right? Without repressing all of their emotions and just kind of keeping a straight face. And this is a key distinction for us to make as Christians when we are seeking to bear up or persevere or endure under hard things when we are in times of trial. How do we do that without falling into stoicism? And we see here in these verses how to do that because being stoic is absolutely not what we are being called to do. In 2 Corinthians, in this passage, Paul describes the feelings that he had when they were afflicted. They felt the anguish of the hard situation, right? They were afflicted. They were perplexed, feeling confused and unsure of what to do next, persecuted by the world, struck down, you know, this picture of falling onto the ground. Those do not sound like the words of someone who is shutting out all emotion, right? But rather someone who is lamenting, who is in deep anguish over the hardships that he is facing. So friends, if you are feeling confused as to what to do next, if you're feeling afflicted or struck down by the current hardships you are facing, know that you are not alone. Paul himself is describing experiencing similar emotions here. And if we look through all of scripture, we can see example after example, particularly in the Psalms, of God's people who are real with the emotions that they are experiencing. And this brings me deep comfort when I feel struck down and afflicted to know that pretending that my feelings don't exist is not in line with the gospel, right? That we have the permission to acknowledge and lament and grieve over hard things. But there's also a flip side in verses 8 and 9. The experience of affliction is not where Paul leaves it. Though they were afflicted, they were not crushed. Though he was perplexed, they were not driven to despair. They were persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. Paul's experience in these verses is not one of wallowing in self-pity, but rather one of deep anguish that is somehow still rooted in hope. And this is the call for the Christian who is facing times of suffering, times when the weight of the world feels like it's going to crush us. We are called to lament and acknowledge the grief and not just keep a stiff upper, stiff upper lip. But yet we are also not to be driven to despair or destroyed by the weight of the crisis that is around us. We neither become stoic nor wallow in self-focus as we endure and persevere through hard times. Well, that sounds good, but how on earth are we to do that? Verses 16 to 18 show us how. 
We do not lose heart, it says. Though our outer self is wasting away, our inner self is being renewed day by day. So what does that mean? This means that we do not lose heart because we are looking ahead. The eternal weight of glory that is coming is what we are looking towards. So even though things around us might feel like they are falling apart, we know that this is not the end. Though we are afflicted, we realize that it is light and momentary compared to what is to come. And what's more, the very affliction that we are experiencing is helping to prepare us for the future that is coming and that is certain. And so that is what gives us the key to being resilient without becoming stoic, our hope in the future. We are able to experience the weight of the grief and the sadness around us without being crushed because we know this is not the end. This life is not all there is. Refocusing our perspective on the life to come when we will see God face to face is what gets us up out of the ground, is what moves us from grief to hope. So Christians, let us be willing to enter into lamentation with those around us, not being afraid to feel the weight of the sadness, but rather knowing that the eternal weight of glory that we are being prepared for is indeed beyond compare. Let us not wallow in self-pity, nor fall into stoicism, but rather grow in our Christ-centered hope for the life to come. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we cry out to you as we face hard situations that leave us perplexed, that leave us feeling as if we are struck down. The weight of the world is heavy. And God, we confess that often we fall to either side of this. We either fall into stoicism or we fall into self-pity, but we ask that you would teach us what it means to fix our eyes on you, fix our eyes on the time when everything will be made new and everything will be right, that that might give us the hope that we need to face these difficult situations, to bear up and endure and be resilient in a way that brings glory to you. We pray all these things in your name. Amen.